The Lord be with you. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, the order of service is uh, printed for you for the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, we do have a voters meeting after the service. Uh, also, thank you to everyone who volunteered for the fish fry Friday night. Uh, we're also going to have a bake sale to benefit the Ukrainian refugees uh, through Orphan Grain Train, and there's more information in the bulletin. And uh, parochial school scholarship applications are due on May 15th, uh, and the form is in the narthex. Uh, and uh, Jackie, you want to come up and do our uh, ministry spotlight? Thank you. Get a little closer here. Hi, I'm Jackie Jackson. I am here representing the board of the Early Childhood Center. We are a board of now five people. It used to be seven when it was the school board. We're going down to five. And we are very blessed to get to be a part of running the Early Childhood Center with our employees. So it's a little bit like more traditional small business board. We have to worry about things like long-term strategy, finances, HR. It's kind of a little bit of everything. But we have a good time. We get to, it's very rewarding to get to see all the kids. So we have everything from, you know, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds who are obviously adorable, and they do things in the church. If you follow our Facebook page, you've seen, especially recently, the resurrection in the sanctuary, which was really cute. So it's a very rewarding thing to get to be a part of raising kids in a faith-based environment. So we're always looking for people who want to get involved, even if it's not on the board. If you want to get involved in the ECC, we have lots of volunteer opportunities, so feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you. And let's begin with our opening hymn. I am content, my Jesus ever lives. My soul rejoices. 
Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak the introit together. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. He remembers his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord oh. Feast 
of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may, by your grace, confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the scripture readings. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 5. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles. And they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest of them dared to join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitude of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is, the party of Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest came and those who were with him, they called together the council and all the senate of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officer came, they did not find them in the prison. So they returned and reported. We found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And some came and told them, look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, 
they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in his name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from Revelation chapter 1. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation of the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstand, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze. They were refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun, shining in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last, and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were aside again, 
and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Place your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have believed because have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for him, 470, O sons and daughters of the King.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, every single day, we hear stories and tales that we doubt or wonder if they're true. For instance, I have a few newspaper headlines here. Man tries armed robbery with a knife at a gun shop. <laughs> or here's another one. Homeless man under house arrest. New sick policy requires a two-day notice. Florida couple arrested for selling tickets to heaven. Sewage spill kills fish, but water is still safe to drink. And Bigfoot kept a lumberjack hostage. Now, some of these headlines might make you wonder about the intelligence of the author who wrote them, or maybe about the person who did the deed, like robbing a gun shop with a knife. Maybe you remember that television show, Ripley's Believe It or Not, or maybe you've been at that museum at some tourist trap. Ripley would tell stories about bizarre and unbelievable things. Things like how a man survived with a pipe going straight through his head. Or maybe you're the sort of person who did not believe that John F. Kennedy was assassinated by one person alone. The COVID pandemic brought about a lot of polarizing beliefs. There were Americans who did not believe COVID was a real thing. Other Americans believe that as many as 30% of the country had died from COVID. Some people believe that masks did nothing, while other people believe that masks were essential to save humanity. Every single day, we have to sort through things and decide, do we believe it or not? And the gospel lesson for today is about doubt, unbelief, and then belief again. Now, historically, this Sunday was called Quasimodo Gainity, and that came from the introit, like newborn babies. And yes, that is where Quasimodo of the Hunchback of Notre Dame got his name, because the baby was dropped off on the second Sunday of Easter, which is Quasimodo Gainity. And we are called to be like newborn babies, and believe the words of Jesus. We are to take Jesus' words as spiritual milk and have faith. In the Gospel reading, we hear how Jesus appeared to his disciples in a locked upper room on Easter evening. The disciples were locked in the upper room because they were afraid of the Jews. Notice they do not have very much courage. When the disciples, or when Jesus appeared to the disciples, he said to them, Peace be with you. And the reading tells us that the disciples were glad to see Jesus. Jesus then showed him his hands and the nail holes and the hole in his side. Now, there's an important lesson for us in hearing about Jesus' nail holes in his side. Jesus, even in his resurrected and glorified body, is recognizable as our crucified and risen Lord. Our Lord wants us to see him that way. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, which is also written by St. John, the host of heaven and the saints of God say to Jesus, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. And we also sang this line, in This is the Feast just a few moments ago. Jesus wants us to see him as the lamb that was slain. He wants us to see his nail holes and the hole in his side so that we are never in doubt that he was our crucified Savior. The disciples recognized Jesus and they were glad to receive him and to see him and to receive peace. When Jesus says peace, he is giving out the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit on his disciples, and he gave his church authority to forgive sins in his name. Jesus said, if, 
you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. And if you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is forgiven. And this is one of the reasons why we begin our church service with a general confession and an absolution. Because Jesus wants us to forgive sins. And it's also why Christians can forgive one another. Jesus delegates his authority to forgive sins to us Christians so that we will forgive one another. Jesus gives us the gift of forgiveness so that we will never be left in doubt about our sins, that he has taken our sins away. What a tremendous gift our Lord has given us. And Jesus institutes this absolution and forgiveness on the evening of his resurrection. Then the gospel reading jumps to a week later, and the text says that Thomas, one of the twelve, was not present with the disciples a week earlier when Jesus appeared to them. And Thomas stubbornly told, his, told the disciples he would not believe unless he saw this himself, unless he saw the nail holes and the hole in the side. Now, I'm sure all of you have told someone at one time or another, I need to see that for myself or I won't believe it. And in a world like ours, a little bit of skepticism goes a long way. There's a lot of people that would take advantage of a person by getting them to believe something that isn't true. You might almost admire Thomas for being skeptical. Let's face it, if someone came up to you this week and said, I saw the Lord, you probably would be a little skeptical. So a week later, the disciples are once again in the upper room, and this time Thomas is with them also. The doors are locked because they're still afraid. Notice it's not until after Jesus ascended into heaven and Pentecost Day when the Holy Spirit was outpoured that the disciples became bold and courageous. Jesus appeared to his disciples even though the doors are locked. And once again, Jesus greets his disciples with a word of peace. Immediately after giving peace, after he forgives his disciples, Jesus approaches Thomas and says, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it into my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. At this moment, Thomas's skepticism looks rather foolish. Jesus offered Thomas exactly what he demanded so he could believe. Now, the English translation here says, do not disbelieve. And the Greek text is a little closer to, do not be unbelieving. We frequently refer to Thomas as doubting Thomas but he really was unbelieving Thomas. And Jesus calls for Thomas to believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Thomas believed after he saw Jesus. And then Jesus speaks about you and me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. You see, this is what faith is. Faith believes what it does not see. Last week, we celebrated Easter, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. We did not see Jesus rise from the dead with our own eyes, and yet we believe. Faith hopes and believes, even when our eyes do not see. And as Christians, we are in the business about believing without seeing. Now, I don't want to be misunderstood here to say that we don't ever use our minds or we believe uncritically or we don't use our brains. The Lord did not make us to be naive or foolish. Yet at the same time, the scripture calls for us to believe what we have not seen with our eyes. And we believe it because we hear it in God's word. We hear the words of Jesus. We are like newborn babies drinking the pure spiritual milk. And as Christians, we live in this tension in this world, believing what we do not see. And there are times when we wish we could be like Thomas, where we could see the nail holes and place our hand into the pure side. The devil, the world, and our sinful nature try to make us doubt 
and be unbelieving on a daily basis. We live in a world that proclaims science and reason as the ultimate truth. We demand empirical evidence and reproducibility in experiments to declare that something is true. Now, if you have an illness and you are prescribed a medicine by your doctor, you want to make sure that that medicine had undergone testing and that they know it can help your condition. Or when you drive your car, you want to know that the engineers have designed and tested the brakes and the other safety features so that they work every single time, that they don't fail at random. And when you board an airplane and it flies across the country or over an ocean, you want to know that the engines have been designed and tested not to fail. They say that it's something like a one in one billion chance that both engines will fail at the same time. And so far, it's never happened. So for the things that we can control, we don't operate on faith. We operate using our God-given reason. Yet for the things that are outside of our control, and sometimes people call this chance or dumb luck or misfortune, where no amount of testing and planning or design can make a difference. That's where faith comes in. These things are often the things that make us afraid or maybe keep us up at night, the things outside of our control. These are the things that the scripture promise us that the Lord will use to work all things for our good. And here we believe our Lord's promise by faith, not because we've stopped using our reason or our brains, but because our reason tells us there's nothing more that we can do. We need to trust someone. We need to trust our Lord who can work things outside of our control. Thomas was able to see Jesus and his resurrection. We hear of Jesus' resurrection through these eyewitnesses, and we believe by faith. As long as we live in this world, we will have moments of doubt. We'll have moments of unbelief. There will be times when we wonder, is it really true? There will be things that happen to our loved ones that may shake us to the core of our faith where our eyes see one thing, but our ears hear the words of Jesus, peace be with you. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And in these moments, Jesus will never fail you. We have Jesus' blessing. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Go in peace. Amen. Please rise. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe, I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the foot. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us pray. Glorious Lord, you have worked the salvation of the world through the death and resurrection of your Son. Give strength to our praise, and let our hearts and mouths be filled with the joy of your wondrous works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God Almighty, you stoke the fires of your church as lights in the darkness of this world. As we gather in the Spirit on the Lord's day, comfort and embolden your holy ones to serve in your presence and to cherish the words you have written to your churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God of hosts, you have added believers to the Lord Jesus in all times and places, from those receptive and hostile alike. Shepherd the nations and bring all peoples to embrace the gospel of the resurrected Christ. Curb wicked rulers and break their power, that all would be brought to the feet of Jesus in worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O great physician, even the shadows of your apostles brought healing to the afflicted people of Jerusalem. As we rest under the shadow of your wings, heal our afflicted servants, especially Elaine, Connie, Mike, Ruth, and Gigi, that they would rejoice in your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, your Son greets his disciples with peace despite their sins against him. Make us confident in his mercy toward us and gladden our hearts as he comes to us in his holy body and blood to forgive, renew, and strengthen us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We implore you, O Lord, to sanctify and keep the congregations, schools, and organizations together with all your people in the truth. Your word is truth. Preserve us from false teaching. Bring us to repentance for every place where love or zeal has faltered. Grant us and our children bold and steadfast hearts to remain faithful to this confession and church, suffering all rather than to fall away from it. Unite us with all Christians in a true confession of Jesus Christ, in whom the world has redemption, the forgiveness of sins. To you alone be all glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we collect our gifts and offerings. Please rise. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of 
of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house, in the gates of you, O Jerusalem. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. <laughs> Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith of the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. 
the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. <coughs> Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism into life everlasting. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Body of Christ given for you. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. 
And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for our closing hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Joy. 